So what is the difference between a dry container and a water bottle? Well, it's essentially the wax you put on the inside. I'm gonna melt some wax, show you how you coat the inside of this gourd water bottle with some beeswax and have a lifelong water bottle. Gourds, 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 gourds. I've used gourds for many, many years now and I can tell you personally, it is one of those things that I find to be amazing. It's a great container. It's a great thing to make multiple tools out of. One question I get typically and routinely is, how do I make a water pitcher gourd last for a really long time? How can I go beyond that year? And that's sealing it with some beeswax. Gourds have a rich history all throughout the world. First, they were really domesticated in Africa and were used mainly as a water gourd or some sort of dry container. Eventually, they found their way to the US and it's believed that they've been kind of in circulation for about the last 11 to 12,000 years. Gourds come in a variety of shapes and sizes, and they are not hard to grow. The best time to plant your gourd seeds is directly after your frost, and you will grow them all throughout the summer, ultimately harvesting them in fall. Gourds like to grow up fences, chain link fences, anything that allows that viney plant to grow up, and then eventually, pop out that gourd where it can sit and grow to its full term. Gourds can also grow from a hanging terrace and they'll just hang gently in the air, swaying with the wind. When it's time for harvest, cut it off with a stem, put it inside of a dry place because what's on the inside is a lot of moisture. It's the gourd meat, if you will. All that moisture needs to dry out and kind of evaporate. Some people will go as far as putting a small little hole in the time to help that moisture escaping. If you set them in your garage and let them really dry out for a good chunk of change, almost until that next spring or even summer, you will have some phenomenal dry good containers as well as the infamous gourd water bottle. The wax you put on the inside is going to protect moisture from getting to that little bit of residual gourd meat and that inner wall, giving it a much, much longer lifespan. So you'll have a water bottle for years to come. You've seen me craft them before, they're not hard, they're not difficult. Let's melt some wax and I'll show you that exact kind of procedure on how you can ensure the entire inner coating of this gourd is fully waxed, ready for your water. Beeswax, you can harvest it, you can buy it in a number of places, but I use 100% organic beeswax. I melt it in an old can, you can see I already have some in there. Drop it in, heat it up. While that wax is heating up, if you have a gourd bottle and you have no wax, you can still put water in here. It's not going to cause this guy to immediately rot. However, I recommend if you put water in your gourd and you consume it all, leave the top off so this guy can dry out. When not in use, top off, upside down, or point it into the air so it's definitely gonna dry out. This will extend your gourd's life, but you do have to realize over a period of time through repetitive use, it can get some soft spots especially where you see any sort of little deformities or kind of irregularities in that gourd wall. This right here likely goes onto the inside and that can be a problem in the future. Wax is melting. I use a good deal of wax. The wax I don't use, I just leave it in the can. It hardens up and I wind up using it again. But there's kind of a specific way I like to wax a gourd just so I'm ensuring that everything is getting coated on the inside. Starting with this bottom section then go for my middle, and then go for the neck. All right, completely melted. I'm just gonna give it a good little amount. Pouring it all, pouring it all, making sure I don't hit myself. All right, it's about half of my can of wax. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start moving it around. I can feel the liquid on the inside, and as I've definitely coated my bottom and some of this wall, I'm gonna tilt it at an angle and I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a twist. I'm rotating, I'm trying to hit this wall. Once I've held the gourd in one position, I'm gonna rotate it 180 and kind of get that other side. This is where people can run into problems. If you don't have your stopper, put your stopper in and give it a little bit more of a tilt and start rotating. And what you're gonna to wanna to do, you can hear the wax, and you can feel the volume decreasing as it coats itself on that inner wall. Rotate again, give it another wax, give it another shake. And I'm gonna do a little bit more rotation. Two hands, I'm trying to focus on this neck. I know I've hit my bottom, I know I've hit my midsection. Now I'm gonna focus on my neck. Let's pop my 
top off. Got a little wax on the bottom. You can see a little bit of wax on that inside wall. A little bit of the wax on the inside. And when I pour it in my container, I'm actually looking to wax the upper portion. So I kind of pour a little bit. I know I've gotten that spot. Rotate. Pour. Rotate. Pour. I keep working this guy so I get my pour to cover that neck. Looks like I got most of the neck of the gourd. You can see that wax. I can feel the heat on the bottom of this and it's a good way to really tell if it's all really warm. There's no cold spots. I don't feel any. I know I've waxed the majority of the inside of this gourd. Now I'm going to let this guy cool. Now while this guy is cooling, before I let it get completely solid, I want to stick my stopper in there and make sure it's kind of got a snug fit. I'm doing this while that wax is still hot, so we'll kind of create a little bit of a seal. And I'm looking for that sweet spot where it just slides in and really prevents any liquid from coming out. So the bottle is waxed. Uh, to kind of take this one step further, I could create any sort of netting or lanyard or any sort of carrying apparatus on this gore, but what I want to do is actually cut it open and show you what the wax job looks like on the inside. So this is a really great thing to point out, the importance of getting all of that gourd meat out. What this will do is it will still seal, but you're going to be adding another layer of just stuff on the inside. So this was just a little bit of that residual gourd meat. I want it to look like this. You can see the difference between this portion right here being waxed and right here being waxed compared to this side that has a little bit more of that gourd meat on there. On the inside of my gourd, this is what I'm going for. Yeah, you can get some buildup of the wax. It's not gonna hurt you. It's just a stronger spot and it's still sealed. Again, we wanna avoid any of this right here. Once this dries 100% solid, you shouldn't have any issues with that gourd meat flaking off. But that's why you always take your gourd before you wax it, run it through the water, give it another shake with rocks, give it another scraping with some sort of stick, and really ensure you've got as much of that gourd meat out of that guy as possible. So whether you're creating a dry container or even some sort of gourd water bottle like this, it is important to remove all of that gourd meat on the inside. Give it a good rinse, do another rock tumble, scrape it with a stick, ensure that it's all out before you pour that wax on the inside. Gourds, been using them for years, carrying dry goods, corn, rice, flour, whatever the case may be, works excellent as a dry goods container. More importantly, it works amazingly as a water bottle when you're looking to get a little bit more primitive. If you wanna see how I go about crafting gourds into cups and bowls and ladles and water bottles, that's the link right there. And uh, yeah, that's it. Appreciate you watching.